Today we have the opportunity to hear the views of candidates for the office of Multnomah County Chair. And with us today, seated at the table, beginning with my, from my immediate right, are candidates Jada Mae Langloss, Beverly Stein, Vern Cook, Roger Buchanan, Paul McCoy, Patrick Lawrence, and Hank Miggins. The other two candidates in the race, uh, Clara Peoples and um, Charlie Gilbert, are not present. Ms. Peoples was un unable to be here today, and Mr. Gilbert declined the club's invitation to appear. This program will have several sections. First, each candidate will give a two-minute opening statement. A drawing of numbers held prior to the program determined the order of seating on the platform and the appearance in the forum. They will begin with Ms. Langloss and proceed through to Mr. Miggins. Following the opening two-minute statements, the candidates will respond to questions from a City Club panel seated directly in front of me. Our questioners today are Joanne Allen, Director of Marketing and Development for the Black United Fund of Oregon and Chair of the City Club's Program Committee, and Steve Moskowitz, partner with the firm of Moskowitz and Thomas, attorneys, and also a member of the Program Committee. These questions were submitted in advance of the meeting in writing by, the, by members of the City Club of Portland and they are the only questions that will be asked today. There will be no questions from the floor. The speakers have not seen these questions in advance. Each speaker will have one minute, please, we're short on time, uh, to respond to the question. And our timer, to make sure that they will have one minute, no more, no less, seated also at the front table is Julene Claussen, a neighborhood coordinator for Neighbors West Northwest, and also a member of, this, of the program committee of the City Club. Following the panel questions, each candidate will then have two minutes for a closing statement. The meeting is governed by the program format I just described and by the rules of conduct that are on the tables before you. The program will adjourn, I hope, promptly by 1.30 p.m. Uh, in order to allow us to adjourn on time and to, to run this on schedule, I would like to ask a great favor of the members of the audience. It's common to have applause either interrupt or punctuate the, uh, the beginning, middle, or end of speakers' presentations. I would ask you that we have a deathly silence at least until the, the culmination of this program. For the opening and for the question periods, I would ask you to withhold your applause. I know there are a lot of strong supporters of various candidates in the audience. When we have the candidates' closing remarks, at the end of each candidate's closing, I invite you to show your appreciation for any or all of the candidates as, as you wish. But please, no applause until that point. That way we'll be able to stay on schedule. The candidates will remain seated at the table uh, throughout the forum and will speak from the microphones that are before them. I would ask the candidates also to speak directly into the microphones. You can slide them a bit closer if you like, but please don't slide the mics around a whole lot during the, uh, the forum because that picks up much better than the human voice for some reason, and we'll hear a bunch of sliding of microphones otherwise. So we'll go directly to our forum now and begin with an opening statement from Jada Mae Langloss, followed directly by the other candidates as I recognize them. Ms. Langloss. My name is Jada Mae Langloss, known as Mother Hugger on the Streets and several other names with my family. My husband, abandoned me, and I don't think I have any other supporters out here. But that's all right. I've always been the only one uh, to run in my family, and I've been running since 1976 for every office, especially the presidency of the United States, and I've been very successful, as you all know, at not getting caught. Now, I probably have a better chance with a polar bear or a Kodiak bear in Alaska than I have with the mainstream media and mainstream television. But I'm not here to persecute the press, as usual. I'm not here to be mad at the media. I'm here to bring some ideas of things we really need to do, new priorities. We have to learn how to live better on less. And if I can live on less than $500 a month without any help from any contributors, I'm sure I can help you guys learn how to live on what's happening in the world today. We've got to learn how to live better on less in honor of the rest of the world who live very, 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 very bad on nothing. We live really good. The, the worst of us live better than the best of anybody else. 
Thank you. Thank you. Um, pardon me for mispronouncing your name, Jada May. And I'd like to acknowledge Clara Peoples, who has arrived now and is seated at the end of the table. I'm sorry if I missed you earlier on. Welcome. Uh, now our opening statement from candidate Beverly Stein. Ms. Stein. Thank you very much. I really appreciate being here. This morning I read over the City Club's 1986 report on regional government and the role and effectiveness of multiple jurisdictions. It reminded me that I'm entering a discussion which has a lengthy history stretching back to an original proposal to consolidate Multnomah County and Portland in 1913. The challenge of being part of the dialogue about local government efficiency and inventing new or revised mechanisms for governance is very exciting to me. I look forward to being an active contributor to this discussion. I believe that regional government makes sense for issues which require a broad overview and I include in this region Clark County. And I will work to move us to a regional perspective. However, I have discerned a crucial issue which I think has been the shoal on which, re which regional proposals have floundered, and that is citizen concern about local control and accountability. Unless we meet this concern head on, we will continue to flounder in the seas of citizen distrust. I believe our success in creating regional government will be directly proportional to our ability to truly connect people to their government at the local level. For the past four years, I've been working on and piloting models of collaboration, which are aimed at creating a rich network at the local level, which combines the resources of public, private, nonprofit, and volunteer sectors. I have been nationally recognized for this work and want to contribute this thinking to our efforts in this region. I can imagine local communities receiving block grants combined with their commitments to meet measurable outcomes to deliver family support and workforce development services. We can create family support centers in schools, use firehouses for literacy programs, and involve neighborhood associations and after school programs. If we focus on goals, we can blur the lines between the public and private and make real progress in meeting our, our community's challenges. I look forward to working with the City Club and all of you in creating a community we can be proud of. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Stein. Next, we'll hear from Vern Cook. I've had the opportunity to appear jointly with all but two of the candidates for this office, and we've defined the major issues of this campaign. One of the first responsibilities of the new chair will be to propose funding of the 1994-95 budget for Multnomah County. We should prepare a balanced budget within the parameters of existing revenues. We should review all current staffing patterns to be sure we are getting the most for our money. As a general rule, that staffing ratio should be reduced to one supervisor for 10 line staff. We should also carefully review all contracts for the purchase of goods and services. If the funds available after that review are sufficient to provide the essential services we need, then I would not support any new tax plan. Should new sources of revenue be required, I would not support a general sales tax at either the county or state level. There are numerous alternatives available, all of which are fairer to the average taxpayer than a sales tax. I'm not running for chair of this county to preside over its dissolution. County government is essential to the continued operation of state government and is needed to provide the services mandated by state and federal law. It is also needed if we are to retain local control over most essential county services. I support the library system and believe it should be continued as a county funded service. The current county commission is considering the transfer to Metro of the Expo Center, Glendevere and Blue Lake Park. I oppose that transfer. <laughs> Control of our parks should be kept with the people of Multnomah County. They are now funded without the use of any tax monies. With improved management, the present profits from their operation could be doubled. I also support the continued operation of the Multnomah County Fair. And I want to thank the City Club for giving to us the opportunity to talk to the voters today. Thank you, Mr. Cook. We'll hear next from candidate Roger Buchanan. Thank you. Uh, I'm Roger Buchanan. I've been a City Club member for 34 years, and I remembered to say that because I know when you get up to speak at City Club, you say, I'm Roger Buchanan, or whatever your name, and I'm a member of the City Club. I bring to this candidacy, my candidacy, bring to this contest uh, experience and background that I think can be most effective in the job of county chair. 
I am now serving as a Metro Councillor representing Northeast Portland, elected originally in 1988, re-elected in 1992. On the Metro Council, I serve as a Deputy Presiding Officer. I chair the largest and most uh, active committee of the Council, the Solid Waste Committee. We have a budget of close to $100 million. I also serve as Vice Chair of the Transportation Planning Committee, JPACT. As Ray Polani and Ned Look will tell you, uh, this is a very active committee dealing with transportation problems and efficiencies. This is a good point to announce that coming at us very quickly is the concept that we're going to have very likely the, in front of us the very reality of having a high-speed light rail from Vancouver, Canada to Eugene, Oregon. Um, you'll be hearing a great deal more of this in a matter of weeks. Um, apparently the funding is becoming realistic and apparently the parties participating in it are coming together nicely. I also serve on the key Budget and Finance Committee of Metro, which in effect is the Ways and Means Committee. My proudest, committee, my proudest feelings uh, come from my work on the committee that I vice chaired in the building of the Convention Center, the Metro Convention Center Construction Committee. And those of you who may have followed the building of the Convention Center remember that we came in under budget and we came in ahead of schedule. And when you're dealing with a government agency, that's rare. And you're dealing with any kind of agency, that's rare too. In any event, I bring experience and background that is important to the job. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Buchanan. Next candidate we'll hear from is Paul McCoy. My name is Paul McCoy, and I think I'm the one to lead Multnomah County into the future. And what we're talking about today is the future of Multnomah County. Some would have you believe that the county could just go away and, and that the services the county provide could be incorporated into other agencies and government entities. I believe that there are some services that the county provides currently that may be done better, more efficiently on a, on a regional basis instead of the way we're doing them now. I believe that those discussions have been underway for some time, but it was because nobody stepped up and grabbed the ring and ran with it that these things didn't come to happen. I believe that's what leadership is about. Leadership is about being able to focus, come up with a mission, come up with a way of getting there, come up with a way of evaluating where you are, coming up with a way with monitoring what you have at all times so that you're not finding $500,000 here, $300,000 there that you didn't know you had. I believe that the, the proof is in the pudding. If you can find somebody to take over as Multnomah County Chair, and they're amongst us on this, on this podium today, then so be it. But one thing, one quality you must look for in anybody that's going to be in that very, very important position is their ability to lead. I've had the experience of working in my community for many, many years, and I've been involved in government basically since birth. So I understand how the system works, and I know that you have to have the courage to be able to cross political channels in, a, in order to, to make compromises that bring about change. Right now, we're in what they would probably consider, uh, what was the word they used in Congress? I can't even remember the word anymore, but it's gridlock, I believe, is the word they used to describe how actions were in, in Congress. Right now, we have that in Multnomah County. My job as Multnomah County Chair is to loosen that gridlock and make sure the county runs as efficiently as it can. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCoy. Next candidate is Patrick Lawrence. Mr. Lawrence. Good afternoon. A pleasure to be here. Recently, I read an article by a local newspaper, the Willamette Week, and it disturbs me. I'm very sorry to see that we have a member of the press that could be bigoted, biased, and ignorant at all at the same time. <laughs> very disturbing. I assure you that I am completely aware, aware of the immense importance and enormous responsibility to this position which I am running for. I'm not running for a matter of power, a matter of financial gain. I've been offered uh, by some very prominent people monies to combat the money that's being spent in this campaign. 
I don't feel that's what it's all about. Recently, a presidential candidate made a statement, people in government are not bad people. <clears throat> They're your neighbors. They've been doing the wrong thing for so long, they think it's right. <laughs> well, I, I have a tendency <clears throat> to agree with that. And recently, in my neighborhood activities, I've been able to listen to the concerns of the citizens and work with the appropriate governmental agencies and do the impossible to benefit both government and the people, and I'm very proud of that. And I'm here because of my love for Multnomah County and the diverse citizens which we have in this county, and I would like to bring this forth together in a relationship that's true and honorable, and once we have the faith of the citizens of Multnomah County, government will function beautifully. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. We'll hear next from Hank Miggins. Thank you. I would like to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm qualified, I'm experienced, and I'm committed. I'm a manager, and what Multnomah County needs now is management to see that it lives within its means, within the resources available to it. We've just put together a budget, $450 million, which has been approved by the Board of County Commissioners. That budget is $7 million less than it would have been. We had to cut back. That budget is lean, but it is humane. Multnomah County provides services to those people who are less able to provide for themselves, children, elder, elderly, disabled. I'm committed to those people. I'm a leader. That's what this county needs. Under my leadership, the Multnomah County Business Income Tax will be consolidated with the city business license fee. The combined business income tax, business license fee, will be going to the City Council, the Multnomah County Board of County Commissioners, for approval on June 17. That issue has been talked about for two decades. It took my leadership, working with the mayor, to get it done. It's done. It's the same kind of leadership as leading Multnomah County toward more efficiency, effectiveness, consideration for other areas of consolidations, such things as parks, emergency management. You know, the ballots are in the mail today, folks. I'm asking all of you, put your X on Miggins, M-I-G-G-I-N-S. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miggins. And we'll hear now from Clara Peoples. Good afternoon. My name is Clara Peoples, and thank you all for the invitation of being here. Why did I jump into this area? It's because I do know about management. I also know about teamwork. I also am employed by the State of Oregon Department of Human Resources. I feel very strongly that we have to get out there working with the existing officials, and I will never omit stating that in every statement that I make, because you have to have teamwork to pull things together. We have to have people who, uh, to renew their confidence and their trust in the elected officials. And I would be an elected official that would not hide from you. I would have open door policy. I would make maximum use of the retirees if they wanted to become involved. Neighborhood associations, which are sometimes passed by. People working together for the good of Multnomah County. I believe I am the one. I have been out there on a volunteer basis for over 30 years. I know how to budget. I know how to follow the guidelines and the rules and the charter. I feel very strongly, though, that being out there, you just don't slap people on the head and create social invalids, but be encouraged to encourage people to become taxpayers. I believe, too, that education is being slapped aside in a lot of instances. There are children just having babies to play. I feel, too, that we've got to go forward, get together. My name is Clara Peoples. When you get the vote, Mark X. For me, too, please. People for peoples. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Peoples. We'll move now to the portion of the program that consists of questions from our City Club panel. 
I'll turn the program over to the panelists, Joanne Allen and Steve Moskowitz. Moskowitz. Each candidate will have one minute to respond to the question asked and will go in the same order as the speakers, starting with Ms. Langloss. So the first question for Jada May Langloss will come from Joanne Allen. Joanne? Ms. Langloss, do you support or oppose merging Multnomah County and Portland Police Services, and why? I believe in people getting together and not having a whole bunch of different agencies doing the same thing. Did I answer the question all right, or do I need to expound? You're finished, uh, you're within your time. If you're done, you're done. The next question from Steve Moskowitz for Beverly Stein. Ms. Stein, privatization is a popular concept among many people. What specific criteria would you use to decide whether and where privatization of government services is appropriate? Well, privatization is um, a strategy for making sure that we're getting the most effective use of our tax dollars. But at the same time, when we look at privatization, we have to balance to see if we get long-range effect from that or if it's just a short-term gain. We have to make sure that the workers who um, are in the private sector that may be competing with the public sector are getting adequately compensated. But within those criteria and the other criteria set down by state law, I think it is a good idea to look at possible privatization in certain circumstances and to give the public sector a chance to compete with the private sector so that doesn't mean that just um, services would necessarily go to, private, to the private sector. Thank you. Question for Vern Cook. Mr. Cook, voters just approved three-year levies for jails and libraries. That's the good news. The bad news is in three years we'll be right back in the same dilemma. What is your proposal for creating a source of long-term, stable funding for county services? The obvious primary problem is the $10 per thousand limit that is imposed upon local government by Measure 5. And so in the future, as this time, the, the people approved of the levy, but in the process of doing that, they pushed down somebody else's levy. One of the reasons why I'm reluctant to say that we must have a stable source is we may just be tying this into competing with some other things within that ten dollars. Frankly, personally, I think libraries are so important that I'd rather have the people vote directly on them rather than having the fate of our library system here be dependent upon the favors of particular commissioners in the development of the budget. For example, on the, on the uh, book level, I'm a lawyer. You know that Multnomah County has the best law, law library in the state. The Supreme Court library is not nearly as good, and why? Because the legislature has to approve and budget for the Supreme Court library, and they cut them out. Next question for Roger Buchanan. Mr. Buchanan, a common complaint is that there's too much government in the metro area. Do you agree with that, and what would you do about it? Well, the question of too much government, of course, is what are you measuring? And the answer to too much government would be, would you diminish what we have? And there are clearly areas in which we can diminish government by, in some cases, regionalizing, regionalizing as Metro does, uh, in other cases, by merging services. I, for example, am aware that we have uh, in action right now, uh, an effort to merge the uh, park system of Multnomah County uh, into Metro. I'm also aware that uh, Metro is considering absorbing the uh, ER Center, where they hold the county fair, which is now under Multnomah County control, into the Merck system, uh, part of Metro. Uh, I'm also aware that there are conflicts that should be uh, taken care of, cleaned up, and police. We have, uh, for example, the city of Gresham Police Department is in regular conflict with the county sheriff's office. And I think the Board of County Commission ought to take a look at that to see what they can do about solving problems of overlapping. Thank you. Question now for Paul McCoy. Mr. McCoy, at the state level, a sales tax proposal is under renewed consideration. What role should the county play in this process? Well, my, my short answer is I do not support a sales tax, um, never have, never will. I've got it written on very prominent places in my literature. Uh, I don't think that, number one, it would pass uh, statewide or county or where, however you would want to structure it. 
there has to be a better way, and we're wasting a lot of time and energy on a sales tax that we know nobody's going to support or not enough people will support. I do support a gross receipts tax with some limitations. I feel that that was, would probably be a much more fair tax, much, much better as far as uh, its equity, equi equitable distribution over the, the Multnomah County or even the state of Oregon. So my short answer is no, I do not support a sales tax. And secondly, a gross receipts tax would be the only, only tax structure that I would want to look at at this time. The next question is for Patrick Lawrence. Mr. Lawrence, under what conditions would you favor a county add-on to a potential sales tax? I wouldn't be in favor of a county sales tax <clears throat> at all. Uh, my contingency is to bring back government to the people and reassure them that the county is best utilizing the funds available. If these funds are, after that determination, insufficient, then we will go back to the citizens of Multnomah County and readdress the issues of importance, particularly education. And I feel that there will be uh, rescinding Measure 5 uh, ability there once that confidence level is brought back. And a question for Hank Miggins. Mr. Miggins. Please identify two existing county services that ought to be consolidated or transferred to other governing bodies. Well, one I named earlier, which is a business income tax and business license, uh, license fee, which will be consolidated with the city of Portland. Uh, there are some areas in support services that should be consolidated. You could look into emergency management, which I believe should be more than just consolidated, but a regional consideration. The spring break earthquake gave us a wake up. Last week we got a notice that that wake up was there. And I think that's an area that we ought to be working on as a regional, not just the county, city area. Our first questioning round ends with a question for Clara Peoples. Ms. Peoples, please identify one significant county budget area you would cut, where and why, and one significant area you would hold harmless no matter what. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's like a catch-22 because naturally I haven't been down there. But if I'm elected, I would have every staff person would have a barnstorming situation, would look at this, what has been inefficient and see where it needs to be tightened up. We would uh, look at a lot of programs if they are uh, redundant, then we would do something about that. would have staff's input also for which I believe that would be a viable tool to work with. And I'd also like to pause here and say that I do know that the parole division has done an outstanding job. And they are out there in the community and they help people to upgrade themselves, uplift themselves instead of going back to jail so much. That completes the first round of questions. We'll have one more round, one question for each of the candidates and we'll go through the same rotation again, beginning with a question from Joanne Allen for Jada May Langloss. Ms. Langloss. Could you critique the county's ratio of social services spending, comparing prevention versus intervention spending, and tell how, if at all, you would change the mix? I usually say that uh, crime is perpetuated for job security for the judicial system with the help of television and the front page of the Libagonian. But I do really think that we have when you think of gangs, the best gang, of course, in town is TriMet bus drivers, but when you think of gangs, you know that they're leaders, see, as well as everybody here is a leader, except for myself. I am a very brave follower. <laughs> I follow all the leaders, see. And then um, I go back to living with the poor and being a good loser. I want to be the best loser. I prefer being the best loser to an only lonely winner, unless everybody here is willing to share the chair. <laughs> it's you. about time we did that. Question from Steve Moskowitz for Beverly Stein. <laughs> Ms. Stein, would your primary approach to the expected growth in the Tri-County population 
be to encourage more of this influx to settle in Multnomah County as an economic development opportunity or to redirect that growth elsewhere as a means of preserving the county's quality of life? In terms of the uh, impact of growth in this region, which is going to be tremendous, and I think it's probably one of the key issues we have to face, I think we have to look at how housing, land use, and transportation planning all interlock. And so we have to look at this issue in, in that viewpoint. I favor increasing the density of the inner city, and I have an absolute commitment to protecting the urban growth boundary as the outside limit. Within that, I think we'll have to figure out what makes sense in terms of transportation corridors connected to employment, connected to housing, so we can pre preserve green spaces, which I think are, are very important to many to this area. People come to this area to develop businesses and for economic development because they like the quality of life, they want a good education, they want a skilled workforce, and that's what I'm going to work for. For a friend Cook, a question. Mr. Cook, health coverage for domestic partners of county employees goes into effect on July 1st. How would you defend these benefits to constituents? I had the occasion to talk to Hank Miggins, who is certainly currently serving as chair of the Multnomah County Commission, who has indicated to me, although he doesn't have the actual figures, that the amount of money involved is minuscule. And uh, apparently one of the primary reasons why that is the case is because most of the people who are seeking these benefits <laughs> are not willing to sign a contract that basically submits them to the same responsibilities that people submit to when they enter through the rights of marriage. So I suspect that it uh, will not be significant except for those who are morally indignant about the whole idea that uh, people can live together without being married, which is becoming very, very common these days, in case you hadn't noticed it, uh, <laughs> or, or those who are uh, really concerned about whether gays and lesbians may be able, when they sign that deal, may be able to get uh, uh, medical benefits. I think it's much ado about nothing, almost. The next question is for Roger Buchanan. <coughs> Mr. Buchanan. About one-fourth of the county's library reference services are used by out-of-county residents. What methods would you adopt to recoup or redistribute these costs? I have a quick, easy answer on that, and uh, it may not seem possible to have quick, easy answers, but I think regionalization would help a lot. Uh, I bet better than 90 percent of the people outside of Multnomah County that are using the Multnomah County Library are from Clackamas and Washington counties and uh, regionalization effort, bringing it under either Tri-County or under the aegis of the Metro uh, organization would probably solve a great deal of the distribution of monies within the library system for uh, the use of non-citizen uh, non use of the, the library. A question next for Paul McCoy. Mr. McCoy, the Sheriff's Restitution Center is well below its capacity. Do you have any suggestions for better utilizing this facility? It's McCoy. Uh, I thought I heard you say McCall. No, I said McCoy. Okay, M-C-C-O-Y. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think that that's another area that we could do better with a regional long-term plan. Anything that is being underutilized this time that we're spending money on needs to be revisited, and that's something that is chair most definitely could be brought to the attention of the other county commissioners. It is an area that we need to look at as well as a lot of others, but it is some place that we can immediately identify as, as something that's being underutilized and make the long-term plan to fully utilize it if, if that's what it needs to be. The next question will be for Patrick Lawrence. Mr. Lawrence, during the last round of Measure 5 cuts, the district attorney's office said that prosecutions would have to be reduced. Assuming no increase in budgets, which specific classes of crime are you willing to see go unprosecuted? That entire issue needs to be completely reviewed by the judicial and policing departments, county, city, and statewide. Uh, it is, in my opinion, totally unsuccessful. There are too many uh, 
overlaps, the matrix system isn't working, there's more incentive for the criminal than there is for the law enforcement officer or the court system with the way things are occurring right now. Uh, we need a more effective usage of the law and the court system to benefit the entire unit as a whole. It's not effective and it can be effective and we will have to work very hard to make it effective as soon as possible. A question next for Hank Miggins. Mr. Miggins, successful long-term transportation planning requires a well-coordinated state, regional, and local response. In your view, which transportation services are best provided by the county, and which should the county best leave to these other agencies? In long-term thinking, I'm not even sure that it should be at the county level. Maybe we're talking regional. But in view of the fact that that's not on the table at the moment, I think those thoroughfares that go from border to border are the areas of transportation that should be under the control of Multnomah County. Streets should be done by streets, by the cities. Thank you. And the final question in this round will be for Clara Peoples. Ms. Peoples, in deciding how to spend scarce correction dollars, do you consider the primary duty of the county to be incarceration or rehabilitation? I would feel it would be a combination of both, but taking a good hard look at what is going on and naturally turning to the judicial system and as well as the other elected officials, the employees who are naturally being touched, they would have to have some input in there and just kind of get a clear understanding instead of blaming someone else on going and work for the best of all. Thank you, candidates. We're now at the final portion of the program, a two-minute closing statement from each candidate. And we'll begin in the same order we've been going all along with Jada May Langloss, followed by the other candidates as I recognize them. For two minutes, Ms. Langloss. I haven't prepared a speech. I didn't know I'd be up here this long. Uh, <laughs> um, a vote for yourself is a vote for me. And I say that to everybody up here too, I hope they all vote for themselves, but I'm not gonna vote for myself. I'm gonna vote for somebody I think is almost as qualified me, for, for me, as me, in case I get run out of town again as usual. <laughs> I will vote for somebody I think would be able to take my place. Of course, I would like all of these people to take my place. It'd take more people than this to take my place, but that's just my own ego statistical opinion about myself. I have a very high opinion of myself. Uh, can't think of anything else, so I'll let the next lady uh, have fun. Oh, yes, have fun. That's the most important thing. And even if there's a law against it, if there is, I want to have more fun and be the biggest lawbreaker in town. And law encouragement versus law enforcement is the way to deal with crime, you know. Keep. Thank you, Ms. Langloss. A two-minute closing statement from candidate Beverly Stein. Thank you very much. I'm running for this position because I'm deeply concerned about the problems this community is facing. Families are struggling, people don't feel safe in their neighborhoods, and growth trends threaten our quality of life. I know that government cannot and should not meet these challenges alone. But government can serve as a catalyst to bring together businesses, educators, nonprofits, higher education, and others into a powerful collaborative effort at a scale which can truly reverse these negative trends and off offer hope for our children. But government can't play this important role of facilitator unless people have confidence in it, and they don't. My goal is to reclaim people's confidence in government by fundamentally transforming Multnomah County and communicating those changes to the public. I will insist that county programs and services are accountable. We will measure our performance against clear outcome goals. We will unleash the productivity of government workers by stripping away unnecessary bureaucracy and giving them incentives to innovate and provide quality service. Regaining that trust, regaining trust that precious tax dollars are being used well requires eliminating duplications by government jurisdictions. As county chair, I will see myself as part of a regional leadership team dedicated to meeting regional goals. 
As chair, my actions will be guided by two basic principles. Delivering results is more important than protecting turf, and working together is more important than working, is more powerful than working alone. My experience has prepared me well to lead Multnomah County. I have practiced law, been a community activist, worked in city government, and served in the state legislature. I'm a professional facilitator and strategic planner, and as a board member of the National Alliance for Redesigning Government, I have a direct line to some of the most innovative thinking about government change in this country. What my resume doesn't tell you is that I have a track record of making things happen. 350 volunteers are active in my campaign, and 900 contributors are supporting my candidacy. Not only because of my record as a legislator, or because they have worked with me on community projects, but because they have seen me inspire people with a vision. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dunn. We'll hear a closing statement now from candidate Vern Cook. My background is, I think, a, a very important part of my resume, which I'm submitting to you, the voters, in connection with this candidacy. I spent 24 years in the Oregon legislature, four in the House and 20 in the Senate. And except for one two-year period, uh, when I was being punished because I didn't go along with the coalition, I was on the taxation or revenue committees of the respective house that I was in. During three sessions, as a member of the Oregon State Senate, I was the chair of the Senate Revenue and School Finance Committee. The Revenue and School Finance Committee is one of the two most important committees in the legislature. We had the responsibility of raising the money, Ways and Means had the responsibility of spending it. And usually it's easier to spend the money than it is to raise it. I think as a result of the time that I was there working with people in government, working with very intelligent and fine staff, I learned a lot about taxation. And this question of revenue is the single most important concern for local government, bar none. The question is, how is county government going to be able to continue to provide these essential services in the face of the limitations placed upon the amount of money that can be raised on the one hand under a property tax, and on the other hand, how can the county keep the governor from capturing the legislature all of that loose money that the county's been getting in the past, like the proceeds from OLCC, the kennel club revenues, cigarette tax, lottery, and so on, because the legislature here, just like uh, Governor Wilson in California, they're going to take everything they can away from the county and balance their own budget and let the devil take the hindmost, and that's where they're going to leave us. So we need someone like me that knows what the game is, and I think I can provide the leadership that is needed. Thank you, Mr. Cook. Closing statement from Roger Buchanan. Thank you. I uh, see the county chair's job as being essentially that of an administrator of a large government bureaucracy, a large government agency. And I may be more or less unique among the candidates for this job as I've had a great deal of experience in dealing with large government agencies. For example, uh, when with the state of Washington, I was chief of the mediation service for the state of Washington. With the federal government, I served as chief of a branch of labor and employee relations that had like 400 employees under it. So I've experienced the day-to-day -day detailed workings of large government agencies dealing with monies, building budgets, making budgets being met, and getting into the day-by-day -day working in which it has to be followed uh, step by step. Understanding the process and how to move the process, projects, and the works that go with it are the essence of the job. I mentioned earlier the Convention Center example. It can be done. It was done here in Portland as recently as a little over, well, almost two years ago. Uh, I was part of that, and I'm very proud of being part of that process. It shows that if administered properly and carefully, governments at the local level can be very efficient and very productive. I have the experience to bring to the job productivity and efficiency.
Thanks, Mr. Buchanan. A closing statement next from Paul McCoy. I go back to my original statement, and that is that we are talking about leadership here. Leadership for the future of Multnomah County and this region, because Multnomah County is going to play a very major role in whatever happens here with Metro, with the state, with the city of Portland. Multnomah County is going to be a major player. And what we need, in my opinion, is somebody who is not afraid to make choices, somebody who is not afraid to lead, somebody that can go to the unions and speak on behalf of the people of Multnomah County, not the special interests, people that can, that can go out and, and literally talk to the city of Gresham, talk to the other cities within the county jurisdiction, and cross some of the borders that we've built over the years to protect ourselves. There's nobody needs to protect us anymore. We're, we can't protect ourselves from each other. I, again, oppose a sales tax. I will always oppose a sales tax. It's, no, it's not even any use bringing it up because it's just not something I believe uh, will have the confidence of the people as, as, uh, to vote for it and support it. And I wouldn't want to give anybody the impression that that would be an, an, it, an issue that I would embrace. I am going to probably have to look at some sort of tax revenue increase for Multnomah County. And I think the gross receipts tax is one way that we begin to, to start to look for that, if it's necessary. But before we get into that, we have to take a look at Multnomah County and make sure we're doing everything we can responsible with the money that we're getting currently. I don't believe we are. I believe we need to take a look very closely at what we're doing at Multnomah County, find out what we do good, find out what we don't do so well, and get on with it. But we do have to make Multnomah County better I think I'm the one to do it. I also want to thank the City Club for having invited all of us up here. I wish this was a debate forum instead of this type of situation. And I want to say happy birthday to Senator Bill McCoy, my father. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCoy. Closing statement next from candidate Patrick Lawrence. Thank you. Well, I'm here to give the citizens a choice. I feel that for a long time now, uh, the citizens have felt that they're not being listened to. Too much money is being spent on campaigning for a position that doesn't really pay that much. <clears throat> I, I am willing to provide that choice with total involvement with all of the citizens working together with the government and its employees, total involvement with the employees, and a commitment that will be relentless. I think we need to start reviewing some of the wonderful advantages that we have in our county for our future in the field of computer technology. I think we need to work with this big business concern that's coming into our area, taking advantage of the purity in the water with microchips and what have you, and utilize our other natural resources, which are our young people, and work with these businesses to determine what type of skills are required of the young people so that they can hire them from within our communities in Multnomah County. I will pledge to you that I will work 110 percent at making this system work together, government with the citizens, to the maximum efficiency available to us. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Lawrence. Our next candidate to give a closing for two minutes is Hank Miggins. We've discussed a lot of issues here today concerning Multnomah County. We've talked about more money, less money. What's important is service. That's what the people want, effective, efficient services. And that's what we have to give them. And that's what I'm about. I'm committed to improvements in the delivery of services at the most cost-effective manner. Reinventing government is not new. We call it long-range planning. Our defeat was we never implemented our new invention. I'm here to implement our new invention. We have to make this place better for our children and families, because our children are our future, to coin a cliche. But that's what we are about. We're about making Multnomah County a livable city for our families, our children. We need to look at what's being done 
and do it better. Right now, I'm the chair of Multnomah County, and I think I'm doing a credible job for a short period of time. And you know how to keep me there? Vote for me with the ballot. The name is M-I-G-G-I-N-S. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Miggins. And our next closing statement will be from Clara Peoples. I would like to say again, I know how to work within a budget. I put together a food program over 30 years ago. It not, has not ever re, uh, refused to feed anyone. It is now being run by volunteers with no funding whatsoever. And in that, we've also encouraged people to get jobs. Since it's been in action, it has uh, helped to get at least 40, thousand people working and I don't think that's a bad number. Also, I know that it's time for all of us to come together. I know I would make a good team player. I believe in working together, calling everyone. Also, I have deep concern about the farmers. I have deep concern about the fishermen, as well as the children and the senior citizens. If I'm elected, I promise you I'm not going to make any promises that I can't keep. Thank you. I want to thank the audience for having been so cooperative and get, keeping us right on schedule today. Certainly the candidates, I think we have an excellent slate of candidates here. And it just makes me feel proud all over again to be a member of City Club, to see a forum like this informing the citizenry of Portland and Multnomah County on matters of vital importance. Thank you to all nine of our candidates, eight here today and one who was not able to be present. We are adjourned. <laughs>